shall be added to us. So we will dwell here. We ask him to dwell in us, around us. Thank you, Jesus. Won't you let him in? Let the Father have his way today. Thank you, Jesus. We just put our hands together for the Lord all over the room. Come on, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. 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 Worthy. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all. You have won it all for me. Last time, say death. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen king. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, God. And you're seated in majesty. Seated in majesty. You are. Let's decree it and declare it lastly. You are the I dare every worshiper in here to just lift your voice and give God what is rightfully due unto Him. Come on, I know there's a lot going on in this season. I know it's a lot of resistance. I know it's a lot of warfare. I know it's a lot going on in the different levels and layers and compartments and crevices of your life. But I tell you, hey, yeah. unlock the power of worship. Unlock the power of worship. Worship silences demonic voices. Worship silences ambiguity. Worship silences confusion. Hey, I feel your God. Worship silences frustration and drain and strain. is a powerful time a critical and a significant time in human history uh, yeah. and our answer should still be yes Lord yes somebody just really quickly just say Lord my answer is still yes okay some of y'all y'all still y'all probably not too sure about that but those of you that are sure I want you to decree that say my answer is still yes hey. mm -hmm. you may be seated in the presence of an almighty God I want to just be completely obedient to God today and My answer is still yes. It's tough. It's rough. David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been and a strong tower And when I'm in a season, when you're in a season that you're feeling overwhelmed, God reveals himself as the rock that is higher than you are and than I am. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to just press into what the Lord has placed on my heart and toiling all night long and praying all night long praying for even this woman of God this angel that the Lord has given us can we honor this matriarch this giant this wonderful and powerful woman of God I wish some of you get yes that sounds a little better because I was coming <laughs> that sounds better amen somebody put your hand towards her and say bless her Lord Say, Lord, open her up in dimensions that will blow her mind. Come on, you prophets in the house better open up your mouth. You intercessors in the house better open up your mouth. Say, Lord, open her up in dimensions and measures that will blow her mind. Eyes have not seen. Ears, oh, hey, I feel oil rolling out. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into 
God, I feel oil running now. I said, I feel oil running now. Somebody open up your mouth. I wish that somebody would tap into where God is today. I feel your God. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard neither has it entered even into your own heart the things that the Lord has prepared for you and so today we honor you and I was not able to be here to celebrate your birthday when in the week of your birthday so I say to you face to face happy belated birthday somebody shout happy belated birthday pastor say we love you we love you and we honor you and I, I, on a personal note, um, I just want to say, and I, I want to honor everyone in their respective places. I want to greet everyone that is in the household of faith, faith physically here today. All visiting guests and friends, God bless you. I believe we only have one visitor today, which is uh, my friend, now I can call you my friend, my friend Merlan, which was invited by Talia. Come on, come on, give her a holy love welcome. Amen. Amen. And um, I just want to thank God for you, everyone that's here. And I want to welcome everyone that is watching virtually. God bless you. Put your hands together for our virtual audience, holy love. I honor everyone in their respective places. But on a personal note, I just want to say again to you, Pastor, how much I honor you, how much I love you, how much I celebrate you, and how much I thank you for being the person that you are that allows us to be the people that God called us to be. Now, you could have said amen a little louder than that. Amen. It is so. It is so. And um, today, we just want to make sure the devil knows how much we love you. And we are, hey, glory to God. I feel you, Jesus. I'm trying my best to, like, hold myself together because I, I really have more of a... Uh, a, 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 a teaching and a more somber kind of message from the Lord for us today. Um, we are in our new series still, Evolve. Somebody put your hands together. And as you put your hands together, I want you to say Evolve. Evolve. We're in our new series, Evolve. And this is a significant series. It's heavy. It's heavy. Those of you that might not have realized that as of yet, it is a heavy series. And it's a, it's a series that's going to challenge us. Um, please, I invite you to take your uh, note-taking devices out, your pens, your papers, um, because I truly believe we're in a season, uh, such a significant season of transition, uh, also a season of uh, where God is challenging us and putting pressure on us uh, to the tune of maturity. I believe that God is in a season where he's trying to mature the body of Christ to become, to get to a different dimension, a different level of functionality so that we can really fulfill the assignments and the tasks and the duties that he has ordained for us to fulfill. If you believe that, say amen. amen. And so God is putting pressure on us to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Work men and work women that need not be ashamed rightly or correctly dividing the word of truth how many of us know that a lot of our struggle and a lot of our warfare in this hour is really resting on the bedrock of ignorance amen it's resting on the bedrock of ignorance my people die because of lack of knowledge not because of lack of the anointing not because of lack of speaking in tongues not because of lack of enthusiasm. My people die because of lack of knowledge. And so it is my prayer, pastor, and my prayer, ministers of the gospel, and all you wonderful people. It's my prayer that God gives us a hunger and a thirst, a fresh hunger and a thirst for the Logos word of God on which everything else stands. The Rhema, the Lego, the Apengila word. Huh? The, the, every aspect of the word of God rests on the written or the reflective word of God. So, 
with that said, um, today I want you to just turn your, your Bibles with me. I had you read Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. I pray that your memory bank uh, serves you well in remembering some of the narrative, some of the text um, in that chapter, uh, even though I might not even have the time to get to some of the points in that chapter. But the chapter that I want us to look at, the text I want us to look at today is in Exodus chapter 4. And it's from verses 1 through 16. A little bit more verses than I'm accustomed of reading um, in one text. But I want you to follow me today if you can. And I want you to stand with me. Sister Brianna, I'm probably going to lay hands on you suddenly. So keep a mic uh, close by you because I might ask you to be a reader for me later on in the um, sermon. So... Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. If you don't have it, you can look right up on the monitors. Brother Manny has been so gracious as to prepare that for us. I'm going to ask everyone in respect and in reverence to God's holy word to stand. If you are in the book of Revelation, you probably are in the wrong place. Uh, you need to go to the beginning, the front end of the Bible. And, um, and Minister Tewitt said, see, I'm prophetic. Minister Tewitt said, you know, I really went there. So he was in the book of Revelation. So we're just praying God's strength over him even now but let's stand uh in reverence and respect to the reading of god's holy word amen come on smile a while and give your face a rest amen hallelujah and moses answered and said exodus chapter 4 verse 1 but behold they will not believe me the chapter starts out with moses's doubt they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice. In other words, he's saying, God, they're not going to listen to me. For they will say, the Lord hath not appeared unto you. And the Lord said unto him, what is, in, what is that in thine hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground and became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand and take it up by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, furthermore unto him, But put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, on his stomach, on his abdomen area. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. And Moses did that again. So he put his hand into his bosom again, plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, God speaking to him now further, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. So God is saying, I want you to do these two demonstrations as a sign that I am with you, and as a sign that I have appeared unto you. And it shall come to pass if they shall not, will not believe also these two signs. Neither hearken unto thy voice that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land. And the water which thou taketh out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord. I want you to pay attention here. I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech and of slow of tongue. I want you to see how his fear of his uh, limitation or his fear of his ability, how it evolved to the negative, how it went from him saying, I'm not eloquent in speech, to him saying, I have a speech defect. Hmm. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go. God is charging him again. And I will be with thee, be with thy mouth, and teach thee 
what thou shalt say. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody just lift your hands real quick and say, Lord, teach me. Come on, I, I'm not hearing a lot of y'all talk back to me. I'm a talk back preacher. Uh, lift those hands and say, Lord, in this season, in this time of my life, I need you to teach me because I really don't know. Can you say that again? Say, Lord, teach me. And he said, oh, my Lord, I send, I pray thee, by the hand of him who thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. My God. And he said, I'm going to get back to that later. Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. Isn't it interesting though? God knew that Aaron could speak well. And that was not God's choice. I know that he can speak well. And also behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. Because now, because Moses refused to step into a certain dimension of what God was calling him to, God had to improvise and revamp, so, so to speak, and create a hybrid plan so that his purposes will still be fulfilled. Though he was not ever intent on using Aaron in the seat that he ended up using Aaron in. It was Moses. And oh God, I, I'm trying to stay calm, y'all. So then verse 16, verse 15, let me read that again. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. In other words, God is saying, Moses, I will still speak to you. And then you will speak to Aaron. And I will be with your mouth, Moses. And with his mouth as you speak to him. And will teach you what you shall do. So God's going to use Moses as a conduit to reveal to Aaron the mysteries that he has in store for the people of Israel. And then verse 16 and we conclude here. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of God. So Moses becomes the one that God speaks to, to get a word to Aaron. In essence, Moses is the one that God says, I'm speaking to you. And you alone, Moses. And what I say to you, since you won't go, since you won't speak, I will speak to you, you speak to Aaron, and then Aaron speak to the people. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this so critical season that we're in and that you're calling us higher. That you're calling us to a weightier place. Mm. You're calling us to a place, oh God, of increased responsibility, a place of increased accountability, a place, God, where you're calling us to steward ourselves at a different level. Ah, oh God, you're calling us to a place, oh God, where you're saying, I need you to study, prepare, to, to, to increase your capacity, to increase the dimensions of your authority, to give you that which I've created in you before the foundation of the world, before we were formed in the belly of our mother's womb, to set you in divine alignment where I can use you for my glory. God, you are pressing into us in this hour and you're pressing us into more. So, Father, I pray that obedience will be our response. I pray that humility will be our response. I pray that maturity will be our response. 
And I pray that God, before all is said and done, self will be slain. They will not see any of us, but people will see you, the Christ, the Son of the living God, and be led to glorify you, the Father which is in heaven. Have your way, Father, as we receive prophetically everything that you are pouring out in this hour. And all God's people say, amen. 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 Uh, my subtopic today to you is simply this. Go higher. God is saying to us, the coast is clear. The atmosphere is conditioned. The climate is set. The setting is set. And you have the ability. I have the ability to go higher. Um, there's so many places I could start uh, as it pertains to what the Lord has really placed in my heart to share with you. But I want to start in a very unique or very different kind of place. I'm actually going to start um, with a quote, a Shakespearean quote. Forgive me if you're not familiar with it, but I hope that you get the point. The Latin expression, tibi ipsi dic versi. Tibi ipsi dic versi. The Latin expression which translates into the English, to thine own self be true. This was a line that was quoted from Act 1, Scene 3 of Shakespeare's play, Hamlet. It is spoken by King Claudius' chief minister, Polonius, and it was a part of his speech that he was giving his son before releasing him to college, or he was about to transition to college. And, you know, Polonius, if you ever watched that play, if you ever actually watched it, like the Broadway version of it or any version of it, usually the character of Polonius will step away from uh, the characters that were in that scene and he will literally go off into um, a trance, if you will. And while he has his back turned to the rest of the cast or the rest of the people in that scene, he literally said, to thine own self be true, which was very interesting because if you looked at the character Polonius, if you looked at the narrative and the type of person that he was in the uh, storyline of Hamlet, he was actually quite deceptive. Yet even in his uh, ambiguity in that moment, he steps forth with one of the most popular Shakespearean quotes that we still hear people echo today. Um, this is critical though because especially as it relates to where we're going to go as we journey through just some of this text in Exodus and as we look at where we're journeying as this series unfolds. Because a part of my evolution, Pastor, has to rest on my ability to be truthful to myself. A part of my evolution, my development, my advancement, my improvement rests on my capacity for truth. Thank you, Lord. It's no wonder the Bible tells us that it is our knowledge of the truth that is going to be the delivering mechanism. It's going to be the tool of deliverance. I, I love the fact that we pastor because we're Pentecostal and we're charismatic and we, we come out of that um, expression of faith and we make no apologies because when I feel the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you, y'all you, you, know y'all can't stop me. I got tongues for days. But, but, but there comes a time hmm, where my uh, expression based on faith it has to match up. My, my currency has to be backed up with pure gold. I, there, there, there has to be enough equity on the back side of who I am as a person that backs up what I profess in public. 
Oh God, I wish I could help somebody. I'm 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 gonna stay with a a, a, a treach today. It's gonna be a teach preach, but I might lean more on the on the teaching, son. I need you to just don't lose me here, my brother. I I I, I need I need us to understand that God is putting pressure on the hidden places, on the dark places. He's putting pressure in this hour on what we are not in the public, but who you are when you look in the mirror. Who we are when nobody is watching. He's putting pressure on those places because I dare to say that your ministry gift will, will always crumble under the pressure of the truth. Mm, my God, my God, my God, the truth, the truth. The devil will always turn a lie into a stronghold, but he can't do nothing with the truth. Thank you, Jesus. I want to say that one more time. The enemy can always use a lie to build up a stronghold and an advantage and gain an advantage in our life and cause us to miss pivotal, critical seasons and moments. But what the enemy can't mess with is the truth. Mm, that's why when Jesus hit him with the truth in the wilderness, he couldn't do nothing with that. Why? Because the truth uh, comes attached with it. A level of freedom, deliverance is built into truth. Somebody say that with me. Say deliverance is built into truth. Mm. And so, pastor, what is causing a stagnancy what is causing an arrested development sometimes in our lives and I want to also as I'm teaching and expressing this I want to be relatable by letting you know that these are things that I've learned personally from my own journey because a lot of times preachers we we take a stance as if we're we're preaching at people but we're not really talking to you and connecting with you to let you know that we've been there too i have only been able pastor by the holy spirit been taught some of these principles because of my own experience and as you're evolving you're gonna have to have several bouts with yourself it's the me versus me principle it's the me versus me principle and I dare to tell you uh, daughter you cannot really uh, uh, be successful in fighting extraneous variables and external things men of God and men of God uh, you cannot be successful fighting the external when you're at a deficit within the internal when there is still an issue that you're dealing with within yourself mm. say so, Lord help me deal with myself see I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get a lot of y'all to go with me there I bet you if I told you raise your hand and say Lord give me a million dollars the whole church y'all probably would have went into a shout and I probably would have heard a key over there but because I'm saying Lord help me to deal with myself you're not gonna get you're gonna get by about two people maybe two people three people maybe four if you're lucky because the crisis in the body of Christ is that we are all experts at dealing with other people. I'm watching who's clapping. I'm watching who's saying amen. Ah, glory to God. We are professors of the next person. MD. Been to, you know, undergraduate, graduate level. You've been to everything. You even had a specific health training in the area of dealing with other people. My God, but the Bible says, be careful because you see, my God, the moat in someone else's eye. When there is a four by four piece of plywood, a beam right over your own eyes. How can you see a speck of sand in someone else's life, but there's a big four by four blocking your own life? Life, son, I don't know what's going on. Give me a little something here. Uh, maybe I'm getting too excited. Hmm? So what happens is because we become so expert in dealing with other people, uh, because we become so expert and so affluent in addressing other people's issues, and we are easy, easy to say and criticize what someone else is not, what they have not developed into, what deliverances they might need, what issues they might be going through, what dysfunctions they might have. We also we, we have neglected our own self-care. We have not managed ourselves and not stewarded ourselves. And while men slept the word of God teaches me in comes the enemy and does what sows tears amongst your wheat Amen. next thing you know here you are 
and a whole spiritual warfare tsunami side swipes you and back slaps you in the back of your head and because we didn't take time in our private devotional spaces and places to balance out ourselves and to seek God for true peace and true happiness the enemy uses these openings to plant things that become inherently demonic Now we got all types of character issues and we got folk with titles that, 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 that have issues that have been un, not dealt with and we got folk in leadership that's just we all over the place. There's inconsistencies, there's maladies, there's all types of imbalances because we have gaps and we have things in our life that the enemy has used as resting places. Are you with me here so far? I'm taking my time because I'm, I'm gonna I want to talk about Brother Moses. I want to I want to talk about Brother Moses because we have to understand him being uh, one of the first examples of leadership and pastoral uh, 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 functionality within the scriptures. We have to understand uh, uh, there's so much leadership lessons and principles and discipleship principles that we can extract and unpack from his life. Because Moses was a man chosen, but a man torn. Ah, hmm. uh, the enemy of evolution, Pastor, is unconfronted issues. Uh, the 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 enemy of my development is what I refuse to face. Thank you, my brother Manny. God bless you. He's with me unconfronted issues it's the enemy of my development I know it's easier to blame the devil you see that's a religious spirit Satan I bind you Satan I don't do nothing yet he'll never reach you yet he's the prince of the power of the air oh god I wish I he's the prince of the power of the air which means for him to even attack you he has to come down <laughs> oh, I, I, can I submit this to you don't, don't be offended some of us are not even on the level to be attacked by demons okay y'all missed that you gotta be at a certain level <laughs> just, I just messed with some of y'all you got to be at a certain level of obedience. You got to be at a certain level of maturity. You got to be at a certain level of a yes, Lord. Where God is moving and manifesting in your life. Where you are becoming a problem for the kingdom of Satan in this world. And then he gives you attention. He don't got to mess with you if you're already off. He does not have to attack what's already messed up. Oh God. <laughs> Pastor, let me know if I'm going good because I'm staying in the book here today. But, 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 but he does not have to come down to mess with you, taking his attention off of someone that's actually causing problems for him. So, so we, we become quick to bind Jezebel and Delilah from the second heaven and we, we're binding all types of spirits and we're in warfare but the me versus me dynamic is still an issue because of unconfronted issues if you have a problem I want to help somebody if you have an issue on the level of somebody moving your carton of milk that was in the refrigerator and you suspect that someone moved it you what you should do simply is you go to the 
person and have a normal, regular, everyday conversation. And you begin to, in wisdom and in uh, some level of integrity, you say, did anyone that is in the house move my carton of milk? And you have that conversation. And once you disclose who actually moved the milk, now you have a solution. Now that solution gives you the ability to move on. My God. That solution gives you the capacity to move forward. But if I miss aim my attention and I miss aim my energy and I start to attack everyone outside of the house except for who could really have possibly moved the carton of milk, what I'm doing is wasting time, wasting energy, wasting my focus and I am arresting my own development so I can't evolve I believe by way of spiritual revelation that that is a huge component of where the struggle and the strain is in the body of Christ. It's that we sometimes get to a place where we're blinded by uh, uh, either our own uh, success or perceived success. We're blinded even by even our gifts and our anointings and the abilities that God has given us because, you know, after a while, you know, you speak a few tongues, you start to feel special. Uh, after a while you have a couple of nice effective sermons even though the first three that you did was horrible uh, you have you have three sermons that, that sound pretty decent and all of a sudden you're ready to open up a church and you're ready to become a pastor and you're ready to, to become an ordained bishop and an apostle I'm not messing with nobody uh, yes I am I want you to know that God is putting pressure on the body of Christ on the character level because for the next that is coming pastor for what God wants to do in the earth next it's going to take people that are sold out it's going to take individuals that know who they are it's going to take individuals that can go through a storm that can go through warfare that can go through a crisis and still keep on going somebody say yes confronted issues and I remember when, you know, in that headspace, in that very minuscule, childlike level of maturity where I would have issues and have things that were definitely bothering me, Pastor, that were I was dealing with growing up in the ministry and growing up as a pastor. Um, even because, remember, I was ordained as an evangelist at 17. Then I was ordained as an associate pastor at 23. So for all intensive purposes, um, my childhood was different. It was different to say the least because when certain levels of responsibility is put on you at an early age, even though you're anointed, even though you're gifted, even though the hand of the Lord might be on your life, it puts pressure on other areas of your life. And if you're not careful, you can go through an imbalance in terms of your development. So you don't learn to be a child, learn to be a teenager, learn to come up the ranks in different phases and places and then uh, master the lessons you need to master. But some Sometimes our gifts become our own worst enemy because we create monsters because they're gifted, but they're not developed. Mm -hmm. So that's why I tell folk all the time, Pastor, one of the arts of pastoring is really understanding how, hallelujah, yes, God, how not to love the gift over the person how to make sure that your concern for the person overrides anything that their gift can offer because if you're not careful you can create a monster yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. we got all these perverted preachers oh, yes, I said that that's why we got all these folk in positions of authority and crazy huh Huh? Yes, yes, yes. We know that there's a human element, but 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 that's why we need process because of the human element. Jesus was fully man and fully God, and he had to go through a process. It was a timeline because God knew he had to learn how to submit as a man. Mm. Oh. Get to where I need to get to here. Moses. 
Uh, one expression of his name in Hebrew means savior. One other expression of his name in Hebrew means, it means uh, drawn out of the water. I want to put some pressure on that really quick. Drawn out of an unstable medium. Water is liquid. Water has no solidity to it. And so his name, his identity, good God. Have I talked to you about the power of names yet? Where, where what you call it is, is, the, is the formation that it's going to take. What you call a thing, that's why you got to be careful how you speak about people. That's why you got to be careful how you talk about people. That's why you got to be careful what you put your mouth on. And you got to be careful what you assign. Because when you give a name to something or definition to something, it goes back to that lecture that I did back in the day. The power of definition. Once you put a name to something, you create something you create boundaries you create an expectation you create uh, 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 something that it hasn't even come to pass yet but you started the infrastructure the scaffolding of that thing so what you name something matters and notice Moses's name means drawn out of the water drawn out of instability drawn out of something that had no solid foundation a moving element a moving element interestingly enough we see that the greatest point of transition even in his life early was when his mother put him in a basket and slimed it with pitch and send him upstream the bible says when he could no longer be hid yes, sir. because she was trying to hide him from the would-be murderers that pharaoh released to kill all the firstborn male children under three years old and she could no longer hide him and she sent him, she put him in the water and sent him upstream. And here in lies the secret or uh, the, the, the pivotal point of Moses' consistent ambiguity, his conflict, his struggle, pastor. Because here this man is called to greatness. His mother knew it because the Bible says when he was born, his mother, oh God, even in the sweat and, and the possible blood and, and being weak from giving birth, his mother looks at the, Moses the child the baby and the Bible says he she saw that he was a goodly child yes. I mean, she saw that the hand of the Lord was on him yes. even before he uttered a word or made a sound so she knew that the hand of God was on him but herein lies the pivot point the significant place of his conflict because he's born a Israelite but then he's sent upstream and falls into the hands of Pharaoh's daughter and now is raised by the Egyptian culture hmm. and Moses from then on growing up as he's being conditioned Egyptian He's being trained Egyptian. My God, I wish I... Ooh, Lord, son, I'm trying my best. Ah, oh, God, I could have skipped right there. He, he's being trained and conditioned. And his emotional uh, self is being trained, conditioned Egyptian. He's developing and has developed an Egyptian mentality. But his DNA is Israel. Conflict. Conflict. And the unconfronted issue starts to spill out in his dialogue with God. His conflict starts to invade his prayer time. Oh God. His, his conflict starts to invade his worship experience. Ooh, am I talking to somebody in here? His conflict starts to invade every time he steps into a service. Every time he steps into a place of worship to lift up holy hands and to serve his conflict is right in front of him have you oh god i don't want to ask this question because yes i'm most y'all not gonna be real have you ever had to serve with conflict <laughs> have you ooh, god, have you ever had to sing oh god and minister with conflict have, have you ever had to preach in a season of intense conflict well if that's you i'm here to tell you you're in good company because i've been there and done that but after a while you've got to to thine own self be true after a while you've got to make up your mind i need to evolve i gotta move from this place 
I gotta move from this place because this place, oh God, is cutting down the, the, the possibility, the potential of my destiny. This place has me always on the precipice of suicide. Oh, this place always has me playing around with spirits of depression. This conflict always has me as a petri dish. I'm a petri dish of frustration. I'm always dealing with something. I'm always, I'm unstable. A double-minded man, the Bible says, is unstable in not some of his ways in not most of his ways in all his ways a double minded man because I'm in conflict but I haven't confronted it and until I face it until I face it brother Manny talk to me uh, until I face it until I face it I cannot really affirm and release the prayer that's going to be able to intervene and manifest to the tune of my delivery because until I'm willing to face it I can pray until I'm blue in the face I can pray daughter until my God I start, my, my, my sweat become drops of blood like how it did with Jesus but until I say Lord I put this thing at the altar until I build God an altar and say God it is me standing in the need of prayer not my mother not my father but it's me somebody just lift your hands and say Lord I'm here I'm here to deal with me my God I feel you Holy Ghost I'm trying my best to just lay this thing down strategically like you gave it to me I need you to deal with me God you've been laying hands for years trying to run away from dealing with you oh you've been prophesying my god for years it's trying to run away from and circumnavigate dealing with you oh god you've been hiding by behind titles and hiding behind oh you've been hiding behind church attendance and hiding behind oh god serving in certain capacities only to get away from dealing with you and dealing with your family oh, some of us is never it's not us it's our family when are you gonna face it when are you going to face it? Because you can't go higher until you face it. Until <laughs> I face the demons on this level, the Achilles heels on this level, the challenges pastor on this level, until I face it here, won't be able to go higher. I might get a bigger platform. I might be growing this way, but I'm not growing this way. I might, I might be able to somehow amass a greater level of influence, but, but, but unfortunately, I'm not uh, amassing a greater level of development of actual maturity because a lot of us God you know one of the greatest deceptions that the enemy has pulled on us is to make us believe that our followers especially in this social media era our followers or the amount of following we has denotes the real measure of success denotes the real measure of development and, and, and if you really have peace with yourself I know folk that are popular but they Folk that are popular, my God, they got money, my God, but they don't have divine manifestation. Why? Because something is off because of the unconfronted. Mm. That's, uh, I want to just go, I'm running out of time, but I want to skip really quick and talk about the fact that the unconfronted issues uh, starts to open the gateway to a spirit called fear. And the spirit of fear is a crippling spirit that can be born out of several maladies. It can be born out of several maladies. Now, I want you to understand that the fear that begins to uh, grip Moses' life based on the conflict of his identity, it didn't start out as fear. My God. It evolved into fear. Do you know that you can evolve in the wrong direction? 
I'm going to say that one more time. Do you know that it's possible to evolve in the wrong direction? It is possible for you to go in regression, remission. It's possible for you to digress instead of progress. Ah, yes, God. And I can't progress if I am not dealing with what I need to deal with on this level so I can advance to the next level because what's going to happen is my influence might grow and my notoriety might grow and they might even slap a different title on me but the problem is the level of the inner man is still the same or worse fear fear can be the thing that starts to cause us to uh, develop and manifest backwards uh, fear false expectations appearing real or false evidence appearing real uh, and, and, and I often teach it like this and with fear please jot down these seven major negative symptoms of fear when the spirit of fear has gripped you I need you to catch this because this could possibly be a huge component of why you find yourself or at times in certain seasons I find myself stuck and stagnant fear seven things number one fear becomes a prison fear becomes a prison literally becomes a prison number two fear makes you lose your focus because the thing about fear is that you become so focused on the fear that you lose focus on the main thing fear number three fear makes you listen to outside influences the negative type fear it makes you start to listen to undeveloped voices voices that lack maturity Voices that are struggling with the same demon themselves. They're struggling with the same spirit. But your ear, your ear gate becomes open to any and everything because you are in a desperate grip and a desperate uh, mode because you are afraid. Number four, fear creates obstacles and barriers. Like I said, you don't need, it's not the devil attacking you if you already have fear in you. Fear creates obstacles and barriers. That's number four. Number five, fear can keep you from confronting necessary battles and necessary issues that are imperative to your future success. Fear, 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 fear. Fear causes doubt. Fear is the birthplace of doubt. Fear. The first thing Moses starts to say to God is, I'm not eloquent. I, you know, I, I can't. I'm not good enough. Uh, 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 number seven, Fear makes you forget God's truth, God's word. That's number seven. That's number seven. So, 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 things like fear of failure, fear of the future, fear of love, fear of people. Delivered from devils and demons, but I'm afraid of people, not delivered from people. Hmm. Fear of being alone. Fear of confrontation. Fear of confrontation. Uh, um, I, 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 I have to move swiftly in a different angle because I want to really land this plane. Uh, fear can be born out of so many different types of seeds. We see in Moses' life that the fear was birthed out of the conflict with his identity. But then understand something. The fear manifests on many different levels. It can manifest on many different levels. Because what happens is that fear will cause you to disqualify yourself. From everything that God created you to be. Mm. Isn't it crazy? How just that one spirit can arrest you to such a way pastor that it can stalk your life and it can literally hunt you on every level it can hunt your progression and hunt your stability hunt your peace of mind you can't sleep because you're in disobedience not because you want to be disobedient you're in disobedience because you are afraid 
my God, who am I preaching to? Who am I preaching to? Who am I be preaching to? But I want to decree something really quickly over every person in this room and those watching virtually. I want you to decree this with me. Say, I will not be afraid. I'm making up my mind to go higher. Come on, say, don't be afraid. Go higher. His fear. Lord, I want you to get that verse. Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4, verse. Start from verse 12. 13 and 14 those three verses and I want you to read it with power and authority I want you to read it and you can st stand if you can my dear God bless you now therefore go and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say and he said O my Lord send I pray thee by the hand of him whom thou will send mm -hmm. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. Mm -hmm. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. Mm -hmm. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. Read that first phrase again from verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. Not because Moses did anything else outside of allow fear and doubt to step into a divine assignment. Hmm. God, yes, Lord, would not have put his hand on you. God would not have called you, young man of God, if he did not equip you. My God, who am I preaching to? I feel like I'm about to run through the church here now. My God, wait, wait, Brother Devante, I think you might have to get up here, brother, because I'm starting to feel happy. But God will not have placed his hand on you ordained you and set you apart from your mother's womb given you equipment and tools and the capacity to do certain things he, he would not have given you a voice he would not have given you the brain he would not have given you the creativity he wouldn't have given you the innovation he wouldn't have given you the vision my god he wouldn't have given you the dream he would not have given you the prophetic word and if he did not give you the capability to walk into that territory and be what he called you to be who am i preaching to i'm not hearing none of y'all yet but i'm gonna get happy by myself i dear some radical saints some radical sisters some radical brothers to say with me in this season i'm going higher Come on, I need about five of y'all with fire. I need about five of y'all with the Holy Ghost that can activate this based on the prophetic release of God. So in this season, I'm going higher. I'm going higher. Someone shout higher. I'm going higher than my past. I'm going higher than my problems. I'm going higher than my sickness. I'm going higher than my maladies. I'm going higher than my frailties. I'm going higher than my insecurities. I'm confronting the issue. I'm confronting the issue. Who am I preaching to? Someone say, I'm confronting. High five two people really quickly. Back to people and say, sis, say, bro, I'm going higher, 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 higher. Say, I'm shifting altitude. I'm shifting. Say, I'm shifting 
altitude right now. Say, I'm stepping on what used to be a problem. I'm going higher. I'm shifting levels. I'm shifting levels. I used to be down here. And what most people want you to do. Thank you. Now stay right there. I'm going to be right back just now. And what most people want you to do is get so used to the level that you're currently on. And they, they love you down there. They, they love your mindset. They love your immaturity. They love the fact that you're struggling and they need you need them all the time. The minute you decide that I'm stepping up to another level, it changes the dynamics of the relationship. But do I have about 10 people in here that's saying, baby, I love you. Sis, I love you. Bro, I love you. But where I'm going requires a shift where I'm going requires a shift I'm changing my angle I'm changing my disposition most importantly I'm changing my study life I'm changing my prayer life I'm changing my worship life I will no longer worship based on your your acceptance of me I'm gonna worship based on who I know I am I need a praising church for the next minute I need you to step up on your feet and give God praise. I'm not feeling y'all. I'm not feeling y'all. Some of you, you're married to where you've been. You're married to your past. You're married to the hurt. You're married to the pain. When are you going to make up your mind? Say yes. Say yes. Come on, son. I'm not feeling you. Come on. When are you going to make a decision? I am going high. Come on, I dare you. I dare you. Open up your mouth and send a fresh sound into your atmosphere that lets the devil know you won't catch me where I used to be. I graduated. I graduated. You won't catch me. Will you last show me? I'm changing my position. I'm changing. I'm changing. You might recognize my face, but my level has changed. You might recognize my face. Uh, but my anointing has changed you might recognize my name uh, but my maturity has changed uh, when you look at me now uh, you will see the evolved version uh, who am I preaching to uh, say yes say yes oh yes uh, I feel God I feel a praise in here I feel a praise in here son I need you to shift in the realm of the spirit I'm hearing an opening I'm hearing an opening. I'm hearing a different frequency. God is saying, you've got to divorce where you've been. You haven't divorced it yet. You haven't divorced it yet. Who is the Holy Ghost talking to? There's a prophetic. You haven't divorced it yet. It's still attached. It's still attached. But by way of prophetic decree, by way of prophetic decree I say to you God says it's time to give it the bill of divorcement hmm. the bill of divorce yeah 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 so Pastor Moses Moses was given a rod <laughs> Moses was given a rod He was given instruction Come on Come on let me hear this Stay with me He was given instruction and the conflict that though he he was dealing with it he survived it i want you to catch this 
you can survive conflict you can still be dealing with conflict but you have to stay positive even though the conflict might persist you have to make sure your mental disposition stays correct because you gotta know that even though the problem happened and the problem existed and the problem tried to take you out daughter you survived it and the reason the, 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 the reason why you need to know that's a God move is because you would not have survived it because other people did not it killed other people but you're still here and you survived it because the hand of the Lord was on you and your destiny was always higher I said your destiny was always higher can somebody just decree that with me my destiny is higher oh I wish I had a church come on can y'all stand on your feet this is a prophetic moment I feel God shifting DNA I feel God shifting on the cellular level I feel God about to work signs wonders miracle Oh, yeah. Come on, release a prophetic worship. Release a prophetic worship. Release a prophetic worship. Thank you, son. You finally reached. Hey! Baba, 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 Sande, Rebe, Kere, Bahu, Raba, Hi, Ande, Raba, Haya, Rebi, Anso, Rebi, Ande, Raba, Shaya. Some of y'all been talking too much in this season. Stop talking so much and get into your prayer chamber. Get into your prayer room and begin to start speaking into what God has already impregnated you with. Come on, divorce your past and step into glory. Ay, 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 ay. Thank you. You're with me there. Someone say higher. Someone say higher. right there just decrease your sound but right there increase your volume but just right there. it's in you pastor God told me to tell you prophetically I was up all night wrestling and I was praying and I called your name before God I called your name I said God remember your handmaiden I said God remember because I felt the pressure and I felt the weight and as if as God took me by way of the spirit into a trance and he took me into where you were and where you were and I felt the stress and I felt the worry and I felt the concern but I said God in the name of Jesus I decree and declare right now that her divine passport her divine authority will be revealed and will sit on her even in this hour and that the glory of God will reaffirm and affirm will confirm everything that God showed you it's the reason why you didn't run in the first place it's the reason why you didn't give up in the first place God says I want you oh God to remind my daughter that she has access to higher she has she has access to higher 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 somebody say higher 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 someone say higher God says your conflict with who you are is a part of why I chose you and God said and your fear and the doubt that sometimes stands like a giant in your way is why I've anointed you the way I have and why I've given you the grace to stand and to outlive certain types and certain dimensions of warfare God says in this season his word to you is simple oh God his word to you is my daughter you are authorized you are deputized you are cleared for higher ground 
Yo, God, I wish I had a praising church. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Some of y'all are not even understanding the magnitude of this prophetic moment. We speak to witches. We speak to warlocks. We speak to every diabolical system that has tried to arrange itself against your body, against your mind, against your heart, against your spirit. Every physical malady, every physical sickness, stress, worry, everything you've been praying about, everything you've been strategizing, everything you've been questioning. God says, God says, my daughter, I'm anointing you with a fresh grace. I'm anointing you with a fresh oil. I'm anointing you in this hour with the power to evolve. You can evolve. You can shift. You don't have to be what you've been defined as. God said, go higher. Go higher. Go higher. Go higher. Go higher. Oh, wait, come on, ministers. Come on, ministers. Come on. Come on. I want you to stand by. Yeah. Go higher. God said, I will take care of your enemies. God said, I will provide resources. God said, I'm going to give you fresh strength. God said, I'm about to put you, God, into new dimensions. That's going to blow your mind. God says, I'm about to assign people to you to pour into your life, to pour into your life, to pour into your ministry, to help you step boldly into the new territory. You are, you are a woman that God says, I will speak to you face to face, face to face, face to face. Somebody praise him in here. I'm not feeling the church. Come on. Come up higher. Come on. I want everybody to begin to intercede. Come on, begin to intercede. And as you intercede for Pastor Burton, you're also interceding for your next level. My Yandobaya de Babasi on the Mahaya, Reba Basela de Shabaya, Yeria Mandele de Kiandalabahosa, Yeta Van Solabakianse, Reke de Kian Subakantaya, Riban Shokonabahosia, Reka Bahaya. I'm reviving and I'm releasing unto you mantles of fire. God says, I'm giving you oh, Shabbat, a fresh hey, a fresh dose. God says, pick up the mantle for real now. Pick up the mantle for real now. Whoa! Pick up the mantle for real now. You don't have to apologize for being what God called you to be. And you can step in boldness. You can step in authority. You can step in power. God's going to give you the download. He's going to give you the resources. He's going to press in and align you with every person, every vessel. Yes, sir. Walk into it. Be restored. Be revived. We press a new wave of strength into your belly. We press a new wave of glory into your belly. We pray a fresh anointing. We pray. Come on, stretch your hands. Begin to intercede for the angel of this house. The covering of this house. If the covering is breached, you become exposed to open up your mouth into sea. Hey, hey, hey. Suba. Vastobaho. Rikamanda de Beheshiata. Rekineva Kalamaho de la Bahoya. Rebekia de la Bahaya. We come against, in the name of Jesus, we come against every negative word. 
we come against every limiting factor we come against every attack of the enemy we come against everything designed to hold her down to hold her in restriction we break her free in the name of Jesus she will be the Moses of this house she will be the vessel that God speaks to face to face yes 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 Joshua I reveal myself to him through dreams and visions but with my servant Moses it is not so I speak to him I speak to her face to face have your way now God praise him if you're in this room today and you're dealing with any measure of unconfronted issues if you're dealing with anything that's keeping you arrested and locked up at that place I want you to make your way to this altar really quickly while the anointing is flowing for this need come quickly Robasa. Oh yes. Oh yes. Come on, if there's still a couple people, come on. If you are dealing with any measure of the unconfronted. Oof. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Hey. Go higher. He's calling you higher. He's calling you higher. Mothers, daughters, fathers, sons. He's calling you higher. <laughs> and this time God says, it's not just an arousal. It's not just for you to feel well for 10 minutes and for a day. God says this time he's doing a work on the foundation on the infrastructure he's doing a work it's going to cause you to start to break free and break out come on teacher come on teacher minister for can you get some anointing oil and just anoint her hands Come on, teacher of the Lord Jesus Christ. These hands. I even see fire at your hands right now and fire at your mouth. As Minister Foy anoints you, woman of the Most High God, I just need praise and worship. I need y'all to just find that flow. Higher. He's calling you higher, very softly.
there's fire at your hands and there's fire at your mouth woman of God because the Lord says I have sculpted you to teach my word and one of the greatest places of doubt and depression in your life right now is based on what's going on with your physical limitations even in this stage of your life and you're saying God but my passion to teach is so great my passion to share the word of the Lord is so great but I feel like my health is failing me and I feel like the opportunity doesn't avail itself but father says God says he's putting a fresh oil upon you and God said he's opening up doors and opening up avenues even in this moment in this hour in this season and God says he's put a sharp razor at your mouth to teach the word of the Lord and God says he will cause your memory to be restored and sharpened he said he said I will cause a fresh glory a fresh vitality to hit her mind her memory bank and God says you will teach and you will teach as one skilled to one like the tongue of a ready writer the pen of a ready writer God says I'm going to give you the tongue of the Ravansha of the learned that you will speak as an oracle and as I can't do it God says I will raise you up my hand has not left you say it the Lord I will raise you up afresh in this hour say it the Lord God says no more doubt no more fear God says I made your mouth I made your mouth I made your hands everyone standing in the room is we close. Ah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, there it is, daughter. Everyone standing in the presence. We're closing. Everyone standing in God's presence. He's calling you higher. He's calling you. Let's ring that prophetic song of the Lord in the atmosphere. He's calling you. Calling you, He's calling you higher. Hey. He's calling you higher. Hey. He's calling you higher. Yes, he's calling you higher. He's calling you higher. Yes, he's calling you higher. 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 He's calling you. Hey. He's calling you God says higher. I'm stripping you. Hey. He's calling you higher. God says I'm stripping you. He's calling hey. you higher. To realign and to reestablish you. He's calling you higher. And he's changing your name. He's calling you higher. Because when God higher. changes your name, he shifts your nature. He's calling you higher. God says, hey. As I did with Abram, he's calling you. When I shifted him to Abraham, God said, I'm shifting you, you and I'm changing your spiritual identity. He's calling you. Hey, so I can shift you he's on the identity you level. Higher. Because I'm calling you higher. He's calling you higher. I'm calling you. Come on. Come on, minstrels. Let's go. Hey. He's calling you higher. Hey! He's calling Everybody lift your hands all over the room and begin to praise. He's calling you higher. 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 Right. We're about to ascend again. But right now, 
everybody minister to it you can take your hands off of him everyone you can take yes I want you to be in the place where you're standing whether you're here or there I want you to lift your hands up I want you to lift your hands up and you're gonna go to God for you 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 for you for you for you and when we start decreeing this again when we start decreeing this again I want you to picture yourself being transitioned to higher levels of focus higher levels of responsibility higher levels of your own emotional stability higher levels of even your physical health I want you to picture yourself the next time you go to the doctor that gave you that report I want you to see yourself transcending that issue and watch God work a miracle in your life you're going to God for you right now come on and I want you to go in like you never went in before I want you to defy the odds of your current season and circumstance and say God take me higher take me higher take me higher come on let's lift that again he's calling me He's calling me higher. Come on. He's calling me Lift your eyes and picture yourself being lifted by God. Jeremiah's name means God will uplift. Come on. Higher. 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 Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Every preacher. Every intercessor.
hope you hear the sound of God son God says I'm calling you higher praise and worship I hope you hear the clarion sound of heaven ringing he said I'm calling you higher strategy belongs to you healing is the children's bread healing belongs to you yeah, yeah, yeah. God says I break every spirit that's been unleashed to devour you God says I break every psychological struggle God says in this hour I open you up saith the Lord as to do surgery on you I see the hand of the Lord doing surgery on you and God says by the end of this year you will never be the same again because God says I'm causing you to enter into a new dimension of maturity and self-worth God says I'm causing you to enter into a new dimension of healing and peace God says a peace is going to visit you his presence is gonna visit you yes Lord I just heard you God says get ready for visitation God says this is the hour of your visitation God says you've been asking God but I can't feel you I can't sense you I can't hear you God says get ready I will speak to you as if I am a person sitting next to you cheer to cheer oh God standing right in front of you talk to you God says get ready this is your hour of divine visitation and God says everything you need you will find it in my presence God says only seek my presence and I will unlock the greater dimensions of who I have ordained you and predestined you to be God says I'm calling you higher somebody give God praise for this daughter of Zion hey. Come on, a, a, a real praise, a real praise, a real praise, a real praise, a real praise. Come on, open up your mouth and release a sound. Yeah! Yeah! Come on, roar. Let the worshipers roar. Come on, come on, roar. Open up your mouth and decree and declare and claim. Higher, higher ground, I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights, I'm gaining, I'm calling you, I'm calling you, I'm calling you, I'm calling you, higher. Higher, 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 higher,
against relationships, marriages, mother-son relationships, mother-daughter relationships, brother-sister relationships, brother-brother relationships. There's been a, an attack on relationships. I hear the Lord giving me a word of wisdom to release over several people here. There are some relationships in this hour that you need to salvage. And there are others that you need to sever. The Lord says there are some relationships in this hour that you need to be careful to salvage. And some that you need to sever. Because it's going to affect your ability to evolve to your next. It's going to affect your ability to go higher. God says the ones that need to be salvaged there must be a, a season and a time of critical conversation. The Bible instructs us to do this. Leave your gift at the altar. And then you go make it right. And there's a lot of... Because some, some I hear you thinking, that's why I'm a prophet. Uh, some thinking it's just it's a focal point on church relationships. No. No. The Lord says there's a lot of family relationships that we must be careful in this hour to salvage, to repair, to restore. Some are not necessarily salvageable. Some you must sever because you must be able to discern what is causing you to stay stuck in a cycle. The enemy of higher is a circle Kadesh Barnia a cycle the enemy likes to ties us up tie us up in cycles he does that by way of soul ties soul ties is not just a romantic relationship a soul tie can be a friendship a soul tie can be something an object that you're tied to your soul is wrapped up in a bondage to the thing and it, it, it prevents you from accessing God at a certain level are you hearing me some of us have tried to move on naturally but you the spirit of god said you did not divorce it so it still has legal right and legal access to you that's why you're frustrated that's why you're aggravated and that's why some of us cannot get the breakthrough that god has ordained for us in this season this is a season of breakthrough I'm going to say that again. For those of you that agree, you might want to affirm it with me. This is a season of breakthrough. It's a season of transition. But if you're tied up in something that has a demonic throne or a demonic altar attached to it, you're going to find yourself in problem. Hey, I feel God. Tasha, this is a critical season for you. Don't be frustrated. Don't be aggravated. And don't lose hope. I feel your faith. Your faith is kind of in a shaky, in a shaky place. Not based on your belief on him. But based on what's happening and what's not happening in your immediate vicinity. God says, I've already set things up that you don't even know about. God says, I've already set things up financially. I've set job opportunities for you. God says, I have doors, tables, and chairs set up with your name on it God says only walk boldly and walk into everything I have promised you God says it's manifesting even now I dare you to receive it hey someone shout higher shout it again oh shout it again hey shout it shout it all right I'm just for real now 
I'm done for real now. But, 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 but. Something is breaking. Thank you, son. I'm good. Something is. Shari Abakosa. Reko. Sabahaya. Yes, sir. Come on. It's happening right now for your marriage, for your finances, for your business, for your future. Doors are opening. You are stepping prophetically into higher, higher, higher. There's seats with your name on it, tables with your name on it, chairs with your name on it. God said, there's a space, there's a promise assigned to you. Step into. Don't be afraid. We bind Phobos. We bind the spirit of, of fear. We bind the fear of heights. All right. I'm done for real now. Hold on. There's a, there's a term. Acrophobia. Acrophobia. It is the fear of heights. I want to submit this to you. I just heard the Lord say this. Uh, some of us might be afraid of heights physically. But I submit to you a revelation that some of us are afraid of heights spiritually. Some of us are afraid of heights psychologically. We are afraid of heights emotionally. Why? Because it challenges your level. It challenges your norm. But in the name of Jesus, right now I decree and declare that acrophobia in the spirit will be canceled. You will not be afraid to go into uncharted territory. You will not be afraid to go up to where God has called you to. God said to Moses, speak to the children of Israel. He said to Joshua, speak to the children of Israel so that they come up higher. Challenge them. Challenge them because greatness is in them. Say yes. Someone say, I'm going higher. I'm going higher. For change, we speak for transformation. Hey, hallelujah! Hallelujah, my God, Jesus cannot change truth. The word of God is precise, strategic. Oh, hallelujah! Oh, glory to God, Jesus, every word spoken was ordained for today hallelujah if I could show you my notes before I leave home I was saying some of the very things to myself while the speaker was expressing the same thing this got to be God speaking to his people but God want to shift us from the place that we are and to God be the glory. Hallelujah, Pastor Mackey. Hallelujah, as God shift you. Mm. The church really need teaching. Because many times we do not understand. We do not go into our divine destiny. Because we don't know how. 
but today we know how. Amen? Were you blessed? Come on, put your hands together for the man of God. This got to be some deep revelation from God, and I believe that with all my heart. So you could not avoid speaking like you did today. God bless you so much. May the anointing continue to be poured into you. That there will be an overflow. Hallelujah. So God can shift you and move you into higher heights and deeper depths. Oh, glory to God. What I want you to do is to purpose in your heart to pray for him. Did you hear me? I said to purpose in your heart to pray for him. Because I'm telling you that the enemy is on, on the de defense and is going to attack. Hallelujah. But put on your armor. Hallelujah. Put on your shield. Pick up your sword. Hallelujah. Because your divine destiny is under attack. Because the enemy see that you are being affected. Your living, your prayer, your praise, your worship is messing up his kingdom. And he's totally is on the defense. So watch out for the enemy, his devices. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, it's so funny that while Pastor Mackey was speaking into my spirit, that he wouldn't know that for years I've prayed to be like Moses. Oh God. I've prayed to be like Moses. To get <laughs> Woo! My God. Woo! This is personal. Jesus. The fear. Hallelujah. Your mind is on mostly your, your inadequacies and, and that which you can't do. But when God has already spoken to Moses, he already prepared Aaron to stand in the gap. I prayed. My most prayer was, God, help me to be like Moses, to love your people beyond measures. That when the people were under counseling and, and, and um, correction from God, Moses stood between God and the people and said, don't kill them, kill me. That's how much he was dedicated to the people of God. And to the call of God in his life. But fear took a hold of him. But I thank God that he never leaves himself without a witness. Always. As a man in the gap. He's always having somebody to stand up. So pastor. God bless you so much for standing in the gap. Bless you, bless you, bless you. May the blessings of God continue to overtake you. Hallelujah thank God for you. Amen. And I just want to thank God for all the brethren that are here. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I just want um, Amen. Roderick, Sister Audrey's son. <laughs>